Trey Boston, former NFL safety for the Panthers, Chargers, and Cardinals, now an analyst at ACC Network, and the new host of a show on the Weather Channel. It is called, this show, Incredible, Fast Home Rescue. And the first episode of Season 2 airs this Sunday, June 18th, 10 p.m. Eastern. There's the photo. It is Trey Boston and his wife, Sierra. Uh, Trey, welcome to the Rich Eisen Show. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, appreciate you having me, Steve. How you doing, boss man? Doing well, doing well. So you've been out of the league for a couple of years now. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to, to the show in a second. But how much do you miss OTAs and minicamp? Oh, man, I can say that I do not miss those <laughs> at all. Really? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Um, you've made a, a very smooth transition from football to your next profession. What What's that process been like for you? Yeah, it's been a blessing, you know, to be able to uh, move on to the next stage of broadcast and be, becoming an analyst myself with ACC Network. That was pretty smooth. It's something that while I was in the league, I was trying to focus on. One day, uh, you're going to end up with, you know, football being over and you got to have a plan for it. So I'm making sure, you know, made sure early to take advantage of broadcast boot camps and certain things like that. So my transition would be a little bit easier. And next thing I knew, it led to a, a show option being a host with my wife on the Weather Channel. Yeah, so as I read on your UNC bio that your career goal was to host your own reality TV show. So you're kind of living the dream. Listen, I'm not going to lie. I'm glad you just told me that because I told my wife, I don't know where I put that, but I did say that one day when I was earlier. She was like, no, you didn't. So Carolina Bayou, Bayou uh, bio was where it says, okay, yes, I am living the dream, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was, I saw this. And, and by the way, Trey, you probably put that out before freshman year, right? Like that's when they take all that info and your major and what you want to be in life Absolutely. and those sort of – so you've Absolutely. known this since so come, the jump, like 18, 17, 18 come, years old. Come on now. Coming out of high school, I always knew, you know, hey, I had a little bit of talent behind me, and it wasn't just football. So to be able to show uh, my character, I, I think y'all are going to love the show because it's, it's unlike any other show, but at the same time, uh, you get that feel of my uh, personality as well. Here with Trey Boston, former NFL safety, and now the host of Fast Home Rescue on the Weather Channel. How did you get set up on this show? How did it all come together? Yeah, so what happened was uh, my foundation, the the Trey Boston uh, Beyond Belief Foundation, ended up working with uh, an organization called Rebuilding Together. Well, it happened to be that Rebuilding Together was going to be a partner on uh, this show with the production company that we work with. Well, they said, hey, we got the perfect guy that we think can host this show for you. And they told them, hey, take a look at me. Well, you know, lucky it's OB. I happen to I already have a career on TV, been around plenty of, uh, you know, to be, to be able to show my personality, and they loved me. So uh, they brought me in, and me and the wife together as a dual package, and she's been killing it herself, uh, truly blossoming on TV for the first time. But for me, just uh, just cruising into this. What, what's it like working with your wife, Sierra? Man, it is a, it, it's a blessing uh, to be able to work with her each and every day, you know, it, it's different because they, they talk about relationships at home, working together and going away from home. But it's fun because when we're at home, we're still talking about work, but our work is, you know, helping people's lives. Our, our, our work is helping people get back in their homes. So to be still talking about that, uh, I think that's a good thing because on our hearts is, is to find how, you know, ways to help as many people as we can. So, Trey, only five days per home to fix it is what I read. How long does it normally take to fix a home in this type of a situation? Yeah, when you're talking about most of these rescues, it can take up to weeks to months. We've we've actually been to homes that haven't been done for years. Mm. So for us to come into these places and, you know, people have been waiting for two years, you know, up to six months. Well, they're waiting for action, and we come in there in less than five days. I mean, we show up on Monday, like literally we're in their face on Monday, and then Tuesday is really when we start the action because Monday we might do a demo. We might run around to get some you know, materials, but Tuesday is when we truly start the build. So it's five days, but, man, it turns into four real quick. <laughs> so, <laughs> so four days to, to fix a, a home that's, that's been ravaged by some sort of natural disaster. Is it just you and Sierra? Do you have you know, 50 helpers there? How, how many people are, are working on this? 
Yeah, so it's me and the wife, but we usually have volunteers from the organization rebuilding together, other volunteers who we partner with with other organizations like All Hands and Hearts. And what we do is we come together, you know, Good 360 is another one, but it might be anywhere from five to 30 people depending on the day. Uh, we have a group of five, uh, you know, uh, builders uh, and designers on our team, but besides that, the rest are volunteers, so it's a lot of volunteer hours, people coming together, doing good works, and truly just giving their love and passion into trying to get people in their communities back in their homes. Trey Boston here, former NFL safety, now starring on the new Weather Channel show, Fast Home Rescue, which season two premiere Sunday, June 18th, 10 p.m. Eastern. Trey, what have you learned most uh, doing this role? Man, what I've learned most is – there's a lot of people out here who need help, um, and it's 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 sad to know that there's so many people who have you know that's from maximum to minimal damage, but that truly need help and, and stuff that isn't it's not optional, it's necessity. So to be able to be in this field, help people out, truly give back to the communities, it's a blessing. And, and what you find out is you know, how much you truly love just making, you know, putting those smiles on families' faces, getting them back to that peace and comfort within their homes. And that's important. You know, all of us want to lay our head down at the end of the night and know that we have a great place that we can lay our head. We can go to the bathroom. We can cook in our kitchens. And to get people back in those fields after being gone so long, I've learned that that's truly one of my passions in life, and I, I, I love it as one of my purposes. Uh, that, that's beautiful to hear, Trey, and it truly is a blessing that you've been able to, to help these people because, as you say, if you don't have you know your home, for most people, you, you've lost a big part of your life. How, uh, what, what are some of the stories that, that you've heard you know, from the folks that you're out there helping? Yeah, so a couple of the storms we did, uh, we did Hurricane Ian, which is my hometown of Fort Myers. So to go back to my hometown of Fort Myers and deal with a hurricane that just hit us maybe, you know, six, seven months ago and help my community, uh, I think that meant one of the most to me because to help your community and be able to shine light, it, it, it's, it's a different feeling. And, you know, you hear, you know, different people being in storms of coming back to their home of floods six feet uh homes that were up to uh 10 feet of, of surge water uh in their homes end up coming back to maybe four or five feet it's just i'm talking homes just savage i'm i'm talking you you walk in your home people were finding eels snakes just different type of eels and fish. snakes Ooh. I'm talking this. It was crazy to hear some oh of these stories. Um, we also went uh, down to the, you know, down in the bayou um, in Louisiana. So to deal with uh, Hurricane Ida that hit them down there was such a beautiful moment because we're seeing the essence of a community in the bayou that has been there for a millennia. We're talking mm. life. Whole Native Americans have been living here since we've ever known them. So. To go down there, see how they, they're living, their, their way of life, just to see how tied the community is in there. Man, just the week after week after week, we just met amazing families that every week I can give you a story because there were just so many great people that were going through tough times that just needed a little bit of help to get over the hump. And most of these people were people who gave back to their community. So to give back to the community leaders so they can give back to the community – Man, that that's that's again another blessing. I, I love to hear that, Trey. Um, you, you know, talking about helping people and and going into communities that uh, have been ravaged by these natural disasters. You talk about snakes and, and eels. Uh, when you get in, when you and Sierra come to this home, to fi is that all gone, or are you getting it literally at that that worst moment and and then fixing it, or is it kind of already been a little bit, um, you know, fixed up before you get in there? Yeah, so different homes were different, you know, uh, setups. You know, some, because we were coming a, a year or two later, they've obviously cleaned up as much as they can. Roof might still be peeled back a little bit, but we're coming in to help over here. Um, some might uh, rebuild them together, might have came in already and did a little bit of the inside, but we're coming to help them finish uh, the rest of the home. So you get homes in different conditions. You know, you have homes that you show up and it's just straight, uh, white walls or straight muck and guts, nothing mm. on the walls, just straight uh, drywall that needs to be ripped out because there's mold. 
So you, you see different setups and, and different opportunities for us to come in and do different things in the home. But at the end of the day, what I love is it's always catered to the homeowner. During the week, we find a day out of the week to meet with the homeowner, get, get a feel of what they like, what they like to do. And we find ways that we can incorporate it into the design features. So it makes it just that, that little more touch of a one-on-one with the homeowner themselves. That, that, that's beautiful, Trey. H- have you always been been handy? Like, uh, did you do renovations to your own home in the past? Is this something that, that you've done before, or are you starting from scratch? No, no. I, I would say because my organization partnered with, you know, Rebuilding Together and Habitat for Humanities and college going to UNC, we would build a couple houses and clean up communities uh, for Habitat as well. So to be able to be around that, it's always been something that I love to do. Uh, I couldn't do it to the mass that I'm doing it now because, you know, we're actually putting organizations together um, to be able to do this. But it's always been something that I, I love doing because being raised in Fort Myers, Florida, hurricanes were often, and we saw them early. So to be able to be around and help the community and see the ties that it can do for us is you know, human ties, getting us back together, the love, the community, building that bridge again. Uh, it's always been something that has been a light for me. Trey Boston with us, former NFL safety for the Panthers, Chargers, and Cardinals, now works at ACC Network, new host of the show, Fast Home Rescue on the Weather Channel. It airs this Sunday, June 18th, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Have you gotten some ideas from these shows that you want to, you know, start adding to your own home and and just start knocking down walls and doing doing some renovations uh, at at home with Sierra as as opposed to just, you know, fixing up places? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Once we came home from our uh, 10 episodes, the first thing we did was look around the house and we have a big wall that – that leads from the kitchen to our living room. And the first thing we said is, man, we got to get this inspected. I think we can (laughs) knock this wall out, get a little bit of more of an open space concept, allow the light to give that nice broad lighting inside the home. It it, it was hard to kind of turn off that renovation stage of us because (laughs) now I think we got the bug. We we, we got the bug. (laughs) That's that's awesome. So who who does like, you know, more of the work? Is it you or Sierra? Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Sierra is a beast. Like you'll find her paint. You'll find her painting the kitchen in the hour. You'll find her with, with with some drills and nails going to work on some cabinets. You know me. I do work. I love demos. I'm a great demo guy. I mean, it, it, the, the brunt force and the sledgehammer is my baby. Uh, but I will let you know, it, it's a team. It, it takes a team of us to go in there and get the job done. So you'll see us do a lot of work. And what I like is it's not your ordinary home renovation show. It deals with uh, education of, the, you know, the nature around and the ecosystem that's going on through the you know, years around the area. It deals with uh, learning about the, the animals around the area. You know, how did they weather the storm? I mean, so many aspects, businesses, local businesses as well. I mean, it's, it's going to be such an amazing show that I want the people to watch because it, it shows so, so much light to the people in the community, but it also has that home feel, good feel of getting people back in their homes. Okay, can't wait to watch it on, on this, this Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern on the Weather Channel. Trey, we've got to talk a little bit of football while, while we have you here with us. Where, where do you think Dalvin Cook, DeAndre Hopkins, where do you think they end up? Yeah, man, those are two interesting guys. I mean, guys you plug in and they can be, I mean, they're your ones. They can easily be your ones. I know people are trying to say D-hop, slow down, and that's uh, it's, it's amazing how fast they can forget when you get hurt. But I think D-hop needs to go to, uh, I would love him to, to, to end up with a, another big time you know, quarterback. I think Mac Jones needs him most mm-hmm. uh, to be, the, the, the team that the Patriots need, but I would love a, a team like the Ravens to go snatch them up. Like, show Lamar Jackson, like, no, we're 100% invested in finally giving you all the weapons you need. Uh, I think that would be one of those Madden teams setting up your roster if he goes there. OBJ but, and D-Hop, I mean, that's pretty oh, sick. Oh, my God, bro. It, it would be amazing. Like, tell me that's not football you want to watch when you got, you got Lamar Jackson passing the ball. Oh, beautiful. And then if I'm going Dalvin Cook, I would really love him to go down and stay in Miami. Mm. Like I, I, w- I would really love him to be on Miami's scheme. I love, I, you know, I like what Mike Daniels does with his offensive weapons. They're fast. They can move around. Uh, they, they're, 
weapons, true weapons. And when you have speed on that football field, it is a new game in these last, you know, three, four years when it comes to, hey, we know how to use our speed and we'll beat you with it regardless of you want to play power ball or not. We're, we're just going to run around you and run past you. So I would love to put them in that run game and allow him just to rip it up for those boys. Those are some super teams you're putting together. I, I, I like where your head's at, Trey, there. Uh, former Carolina Panther, what, what's your, uh, your outlook on their season? They got, a, they got a nice rookie quarterback coming in. Yeah, I've been hearing good things about Bryce Young. I've been talking to a few of the guys, man. They, they, they love his composure. They love that, you know, off the field, they don't have to worry about him not being uh, with his head in it. You know, they, they, they know that he's focused when he's off the field. They know that he's putting in his grind, that it takes to be a professional. And to be QB1, it takes a different grind. I mean, I watched Cam Newton – from, you know, uh, the earliest in the office to leaving 7, 8 a.m. when guys are leaving at 5, 6. I mean, leaving at 9 when guys are leaving at 5, 6. I mean, you have to put in that work. So to see guys around him like Josh McCown, who's his coach, I think it's, it's pivotal because you need those veterans uh, like him and Andy Dalton to – Feed him the knowledge that he needs because it's a game of reps. As long as you can get your reps, you're going to get better. But to have veterans like those two guys around him at an early age when he already is focused and has that great mental, has come from Bama, so you know Nick Saban's coached him up well mm-hmm. with the offensive coordinators he's had. I mean, I think Bryce Young, the, 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 I would say the ceiling is the roof. The ceiling is the roof. All right, uh, I, I like that. I, I, I say the, the ceiling is the. There is no ceiling. It's the, it's the sky. I'm I'm high on Bryce Young, and it's it's exciting, right? When you have like a rookie quarterback coming in to a franchise, to me, you know, the fan. It, it may not work out. You know, history says that usually it doesn't, but it, it's very exciting. Uh, you you've yeah. you know you were in the league for seven years, covered a lot of of different receivers. Who's who's the toughest matchup you ever had? Oh, I mean, toughest matchup I've ever had, man. Julio Jones in his prime was was an animal. I mean, an animal. I got to witness him go off for 300 passing yards. Listen, I did not start that game. That was (laughs) coach's decision. Listen, that hey, that wasn't me. None of those yards. Uh, I, I listen. That wasn't me. Uh, I, I, you know, I was probably in for about sixty seven, but three hundred. No, no. <laughs> but no, man. Julio Jones at the at the peak of his prime, man. The way he could stop on a dime, being what six four, two twenty. I mean, he was a beast. He was an animal. So to play against guys like that, I mean, it, it truly, he was a game changer anytime he was on the field. Yeah, no, he, Julio Joe, I couldn't imagine go, going up against it. You're a big dude, though. So, I, you know, I, 60, 70, it would have not have been 300 if you had started that game. So we need yeah, to. No, uh, no, no, we both know that, yeah. bro. No way. <laughs> you, you would have held him definitely under 100 for sure. Maybe one touch. I, but. I, I, will, I, I ain't going to say that, but <laughs> 300, no. <laughs> Uh, you also play for the Chargers. Uh, what, what, what do you think about their team? Can they can they win the Super Bowl this year? Justin Herbert, they got great defense as well. All you talk about receivers, they just got a rookie to join uh, join the crew. They already were kind of stacked yeah. there. Yeah, I, I like the Chargers. I mean, the NFL. You know, one thing young, you know, older guys told the vets. You know, back when I was young, was it's an elite quarterback league. Like you will not see guys deep into the playoffs, Super Bowl teams year in and year out without elite quarterbacks. And I think Justin Herbert is an elite quarterback. When you put the ball in his hands and you have healthy options around him, you have, you know, uh, Austin Ecklers, you have, uh, you know, the, the, the three wide receivers that they have in, in Keenan Allen and Williams, Mike Will, and, and you have the young guy coming out of, you know, Texas Christian, you know, uh, TCU. So, I think when you have weapons around elite quarterbacks, they get the job done. It's about what the defense will do. Can we? I, I say we as just teams I played with, but <laughs> you can, you know. But but can can you as the Chargers find a way to keep a, a Derwin James healthy because mm-hmm. he is the motor to that defense. Without him on that defense, it is not the same. It can play well, but I think there's a different energy when he is out there playing well. Uh, but I think when you have those guys and the nucleus healthy, 
they get the job done. Joey Bosa, I mean, this guy is ridiculous. So if those guys, I think between Joey Bosa and Derwin on the defense can stay healthy and the team stays healthy overall, I mean, they have a chance with Justin at quarterback. 100%. Could, could not agree more. TJ's got a question for you, Trey. Hey, Trey, what's yeah, up, brother? Uh, just real quick, I just saw a poll on Instagram, and I figured you might be a perfect guy to ask this question of. Uh, a poll on NFL's Instagram page said, there's a jump ball for $1 million. Who yeah. are you taking to make this catch? And they gave five wide receivers, and I'm going to give you the five, and you let me know who you Calvin would Justin. take to, to win this $1 million. We have D-Hop. We have uh-huh. Devontae. We have uh-huh. Mike Evans. We have uh-huh. Justin Jefferson, and we have Mike Williams. Uh-huh. Out of those five. Okay, so, okay, so all current guys right now. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, okay, off the rip, I'm already thinking about, you know, D-Hop has, a, you know, three, you know, over three guys from Buffalo, so he's a high contender. It was a bad Mike catch Williams by eye, as is, he said. Like, Mike Williams is the best 50-50 deep ball threat in the league. I don't care what nobody says. And then Mike Evans is another one that's just a purist when it comes to being a big body, 6'5", 6'6", and going up to get the ball. Whew, man, right now today, I don't think you're going wrong with any three of those guys. D-Hop, don't hurt me for saying this. <laughs> I think I, I think Mike Williams right now. I mean, I think D-Hop is, uh, uh, you know, getting a little past his prime, can still make those big-time catches, but – Mike Williams is the guy right now for deep balls, um, throwing Hail Marys, man. So uh, I hate that I don't get to go D-hop, but, uh, yeah, Mike Will right now is that guy. Well, I hope you're right. You can make a lot of renovations with that million dollars if he comes down with the ball. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a, that's a lot of homes right there. That's true, true. <laughs> Who, who's leading that poll, TJ, right now? Uh, well, it's, I'd have, there's almost 3,000 com- uh, comments, so it's okay. hard to really say. But Mike Williams has a few Somebody mentioned Kelvin Benjamin. He wasn't even eligible, so. <laughs> but well, you oh, went with Megatron, that's right, that's Trey? I, I, you were like you said, Calvin said Johnson. It, I, yeah, I went Calvin Johnson. If, you, if you're going all time, yeah. I'm going Calvin Johnson or Randy Moss. Right? Yeah, I would take Randy. Like, that you know, saying, I mean, he like, all people, time, right? those are my two guys. I, I think you're, sure. you're winning the money with either one of those two. <laughs> <laughs> Before we let you go, what, what's your who's your uh, way too early pick to win the Super Bowl next year? Mm, okay, way too early pick to win the Super Bowl this year. I mean, uh, it's kind of cheating, but you can always go Kansas City. I, I don't like going like uh, teams that we know should be there. I think a team that we're sleeping on that can go over the hump can be uh, the Ravens. Okay. I like that. The Ravens. Yeah, because I especially think, yeah, if they had D <laughs> Yeah, and we'll see. That's what I'm saying. If they can go out and get D Hop. I think the Ravens. I, I think uh, if you get a healthy, you know, healthy Lamar, I think that's a team that's kind of a dark horse because they still got to go through the Bengals. They still got to go through Kansas City. I felt like Miami's another team right there. They're on the cusp, but those are the teams that I think on. The NFC, I don't know. I, I think I got to do a little more studying on that side of the ball because I feel like there's a few teams that have switched some things up, which make me want to say the Eagles, the way they just drafted. I mean, they just had a stellar they're draft. Stacked. So yeah, they're stacked. It's, it's easily to say that, hey, the Eagles can easily repeat this if they can. But one thing I've learned in the league, nothing comes easy in that league. You you got to go after it week by week. And uh, I've been on teams that been to the Super Bowl and next year didn't make the playoffs because you thought it was just going to be the same old task. And once people know what you're about, it's a different ball game. I love it. Uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Once again, Trey Boston, the show is Fast Home Rescue. It premieres Sunday, June 18th, 10 p.m. Eastern on the Weather Channel. There, there he is, Trey and his wife, Sierra, available on Roku, just like we are, by the way, as yeah. well. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Trey. Best of luck with the show. No, thank you. Appreciate you, Steve. Appreciate you, TJ, man. Y'all have a good one. God bless, man. Thank you so much. Trey Boston. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.